In today's video, I'm going to show you how to wire a GFCI outlet just to replace an ordinary outlet and protect that outlet. But I'm also going to show you how to wire additional outlets to it so you can protect other ordinary outlets from this same GFCI. Coming up. So we're going to talk about two scenarios today. Let's say there's a situation where you've had a home inspection because you're selling your house and the inspector found that an outlet in your garage is not GFCI protected. So I'm going to show you how to replace that outlet with a GFCI so you don't have to call an electrician to do it. And the second scenario is let's say you want to do some wiring in your basement. You want to add some outlets. Well, you have to have GFCI protection in a basement because they are subject to flooding. So code requires a GFCI outlet. And in that scenario, I'm going to show you how to take this outlet and then add other outlets to it that are protected by this one. So that's what we're going to get to today. I'm going to turn off the power and open this outlet up. All right, with the power off, I opened up this outlet and I want to show you what is installed here. And you can see there's just one cable coming in with three wires in it. It has a bare copper wire, that's the ground. And then it has the white wire, which is neutral, and the black wire, which is the hot. And this collectively is known as the line because that's how power comes into this outlet. Now, one thing I want you to think about is the way current flows. And this may not be exact, but it's the way I understand it, okay? The hot wire is the black wire. I look at it as the current comes down the black wire, and then when something is plugged in here, it goes back down the neutral wire. So think of it as a loop. Something has to be plugged in. Let's just take, for example, this tester. If I was to plug that in and the power was on, the lights in here would complete the circuit. So power comes down the black and goes back up the white. Now what a GFCI outlet does is it actually measures the power of what comes down the black and goes back the white. And if for some reason any of that power from that circuit gets diverted to ground, it quickly cuts off the power, breaks the circuit, so that condition can't shock somebody. On a GFCI, there's actually two sets of screws, but this set has tape over it. So we're not gonna use that in my first scenario. We're just gonna use these, these screws right here, and those are considered the line. That's power coming in, which is what this wire is. And there's a silver screw, which is gonna get the white wire, and a brass screw, which gets the black wire, and a green screw, which gets the bare copper ground. Now, because this is a back wire device, I don't need to wrap anything around the screws, so I straightened out the wires so there are no hooks on them. The first one I'm gonna connect is the ground, and it just slides in underneath that metal that's behind this screw, and then I'm gonna tighten the screw down. But a flat blade screwdriver is not ideal for this. I invested, after <laughs> how many years old I am, I finally invested in the proper kind of screwdriver that is meant for, it's got a combination of a slotted screw and a bit of a Robertson on there as well. And that is perfectly made to tighten these screws. And that is all that is required to wire a GFCI outlet. All right, let's turn on the power and give it a test. All right, the power is back on, but my little green light is not lit down here. And the reason for that is by default, this is in a trip situation. So you have to push the reset button. And when I do that, you can see the light turns green. If I push test, the light goes out. And you can see I have two green lights that indicates it's wired correctly. Now for the second scenario, I wanna put an outlet off of this or several outlets. So let's see what we have to do to wire that. I'm just gonna install this outlet up here and run it off of this one and this outlet will be protected as well. So let's turn off the power and see how that's done. Now with the power turned off, I pulled it out and I'm gonna take this little tape off of here. And you only take this tape off if you're gonna use these leads. And these say the load terminals under the label are for feeding additional receptacles. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now, I've got, again, a brass screw here, and I've got a silver screw on the other side. 
So to wire the other receptacle, I'm going to start by running a new wire between these two boxes. Okay, what I've done here is I ran a wire between these two boxes and I installed this outlet exactly as it was down here. I just connected the neutral to the silver, the black to the brass screw, and the bare copper to the green screw. So that outlet is done. Now I'm going to turn my attention down here. You probably can't see it, but under here it says load. This side was the line up top, and this one is the load. Now don't trust that, that just happens to be this brand. You always have to read to see which side is the line and which one is the load. But in this case, the load is down the bottom. Now what that means is the line is power coming in, so that's not protected. The load is for any other outlets downstream that are gonna be protected. So that's where I'm gonna connect these wires. The only problem is the ground only allows me to connect one wire there. And for that, I'm gonna to need to pigtail. Now, a pigtail is this short wire that goes between the receptacle and this, the rest of them. This is a, a Wago connector that I connected all three of these copper wires together. You have to use a pigtail in this situation because you can only put one ground wire on the receptacle. The reason for that is, is that I could remove this and the other grounds are still connected because it's very important that for, for safety that the grounds have to always be continuous. So that's why they don't allow you to connect them here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the other two wires to the load side of this receptacle. Okay, the white goes to the silver screw, just like the on the line side. And the black goes on the brass screw, just like up here. Okay, now I'm going to turn the power back on and let's give it a test. All right, just like before, I'm going to press the reset button. And now the green light comes on and I know I have power here. Two greens means it's wired correctly. And now I'm going to plug it in up here. And here you can see two greens means it's wired correctly. So that's good. Now I'm just going to put a light bulb in here so it's easier for you to see. And then I'm going to press the test button here. And you can see that bulb goes out, which means this outlet is protected just like this one. So now you can put as many outlets as you want off of this one. And they will all be protected by this GFCI. If you have any questions on how to wire a GFCI outlet or other outlets, just leave me a comment down below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. If you need shade on your deck or patio this summer, check out Toya Grid Pergola Kits. You source the lumber locally and can assemble this modular system in as little as 30 minutes. Check the video description for links to videos and more information about Toya Grid.